Today, I'm gonna to demonstrate how easy it is to set up an online store in order to sell products and services. And there's never been a better time to be involved in e-commerce than right now, given what's been going on around the globe with all the restrictions for those of you involved in a bricks and mortar type business, or even fitness instructors being forced to work from home, people that are used to offering services face to face, it's now really important to find ways to sell your products and services online and reduce that barrier that has been created around what's going on right now. Setting up e-commerce used to be a very difficult task, but it's become so much easier with a range of available options that you can get access to at a very low cost, usually a monthly fee. In the past, you had to involve web developers in order to do this. Now the platforms have become so good that anybody with just a little bit of web experience, a little bit of savviness can get on there and create their own store. It just, it really comes down to having a bit of an eye for detail, understanding the user experience a little bit so that you're offering the best experience when your customers are transacting with you. And of course, it goes without saying, having a great business idea, having a range of products to sell, or if you have services, finding out a way that you can package that up and sell that as an online product. So I've handpicked some of the best online platforms that I think you should consider using if you are setting up an online store. But before we do that, a quick discussion about what you need to do before you even get to that step. And that usually involves establishing a brand identity, including the brand name itself and a logo, and also securing a domain name which all together form an essential component of establishing your business and giving it credibility when people come to your website and are going to transact with you, whether they're coming from a direct search in Google or whether they're being sent over from one of your posts on social media. When they finally land on that website, you don't want to necessarily have them go to some generic domain. The best way to do it is to have them go to a branded domain name that incorporates your logo and has everything about it that suggests that you are serious about your business. So the first thing we need to do is go to a domain name registrar. And depending on where you live, you can go to a number of different places to purchase your domain name. If you're in America, you can go to GoDaddy, Bluehost, or crazydomains.com. And the purchase price is usually around $9.95 per year. And you can secure your domain name for a period of one year or more, sometimes up to even five years. They do need to be renewed after that contract period. So you need to make sure that you're on top of that and you don't lose your domain name. Now, unfortunately, it's getting harder and harder to secure the domain name that matches your business or even to come up with one that is inventive and creative because so many people have already gone online and registered domain names that may be similar to your business. And even though you might think you're unique in your own particular geographic region, when we're talking about global domain name ownership, there are quite often or very likely going to be businesses with the same name as you in other regions, and they may have already purchased that domain name. So if that's the case, when you go onto these domain websites, you can do a search. If the domain's been taken, you need to come up with a variation of that domain or use a different suffix. Usually the one to go for is a .com, but if you can't get a .com and you are dealing with an audience in your own country, for example, here in Australia, I could consider a .com.au. You can get other domain name suffixes such as .org, .net, and there's a whole host of different variations on domains that relate to the products and services available. You can now get .photography, .video, .film, for example, there's a whole range of domains you can get, but if you can, try and get a .com domain because that's kind of the convention that people expect when it comes to purchasing online. But having said that, really, as long as it is a domain that matches your business name, you should be good to go. So once you've purchased that domain name, put it aside, you're not gonna use it up front, but you will need it later on to tie the whole experience in once you've selected your online platform. So let's jump over and have a look at the options for selling products online and what platforms are available. I've handpicked around four or five to consider in today's demonstration, and there's advantages and disadvantages to each. I'll give you the starter information on all these platforms, and then you can go to the websites and have a look 
at which one you think is going to suit your requirements best based on the functions and, and features they have to offer and also based on the budget you have available to spend. Some of them have free plans, but most of them typically will require a monthly fee in order to access these services. So the first one we're going to talk about is Wix stores. Wix has been around for years and now they've got the Wix stores aspect of their offering, which really does provide a drag and drop intuitive approach to building an online store. There is a free account option available. They also have plans starting at $17 a month, progressing up to 25 and 35, depending on the features and the volume of traffic that you're going to have going through your store. The next one to consider in the same space as Wix is Squarespace. They've had many years of experience in providing drag and drop website builders, and they've now got e-commerce functionality as well. And their plans start at around $26 per month and go up to $40 for the advanced version. There is no free account there, so there's only the paid option. And they're the two that I've handpicked as kind of website slash e-commerce stores that are going to have a number of amazing templates that allow you to get started very easily. Now, the next two I want to talk about are more specifically geared towards e-commerce and would have some advanced features when it comes to setting up an e-commerce store. So for those of you with uh, advanced product requirements or looking at expanding to become a larger business in the future, I would suggest Shopify or BigCommerce. Both of these platforms are really designed from the beginning to help you sell products online. They have all the integration within them in order to work with accounting platforms, in order to link in with social media platforms, and they also have a very broad network of developer support if you want to further customize the solutions for very specific requirements. So if you really want to go down the track of e-commerce and you think you might be expanding and getting serious about it, I would suggest either Shopify or Big Commerce. And the final one I want to talk about is my favorite, and that is WooCommerce for WordPress. And I use this platform myself because I've been building on WordPress platforms for so many years now that I have a great degree of familiarity with the platform. I find it the most expandable of them all. And it allows you, if you have some development skills, to get right in there and customize them to any degree. So that is the main advantage of using WooCommerce. But the other advantage is that you don't have to pay a monthly fee. The WooCommerce plugin is absolutely free. You can download it and install it into your existing WordPress installation. And within a few steps, you're literally up and running. And quite often, the template that you already have may be suited towards WooCommerce without any further customization. And then there's WooCommerce compatible templates that you can download that usually cost anywhere from $50 to $100 as a one-off payment that will allow you to have a more specific e-commerce experience that's tailored to all of the features within WooCommerce. So they're my top picks for setting up an e-commerce store in 2020. And then finally, once you've set up your e-commerce platform, the next thing you need to do is think about how you're going to be marketing your products. Now, most of us have already spent some time developing our brands on social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, could be TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever it might be. So you can leverage off these platforms to get people to go through to your website and purchase products. But if you have spent enough time developing an audience on Facebook or Instagram, I think these are probably the two most successful platforms in driving traffic over to your website. And better yet is the ability in Facebook using the brand new Facebook Commerce Manager to build a store within Facebook and sell the products from directly within Facebook, eliminating the need to go to your external third-party website and keeping the viewer where they are within the platform. And that can be an even better way to go if you already have a large audience on social media. And if you want more information on just how to do all that, I've actually created a video on how to use the Commerce Manager to sell products on Facebook and link them through to Instagram as well. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. And on a final note, let's not forget perhaps the most important way to market a brand new website, and that's using Google Search. There's two different aspects to Google Search. There's SEO 
and there's SEM. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, where you actually optimize the code on your website so that it performs better when people do a search using the Google search engine with the aim or the intention of, of having that search found organically without you having to pay for ongoing advertising. And the next one is SEM, search engine marketing, where you actually can create ads in order to have them appear when people do a search using the Google search engine. And these ads will appear in the top or the right hand corner of the Google page. So they're the two different ways you can start promoting your website through Google. I haven't got time to go through the details in each of those in this video. Perhaps if there's enough interest and demand for that kind of content, I might create a video in the not too distant future. So if you do wanna see more of my videos, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified as up and coming videos are available. And if you do wanna see any more content related to this topic or anything in particular that I've not covered, feel free to put those questions in the comments box below and I'll either answer the questions directly or look at producing a brand new video in the future. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.